Hey guys, how y'all doing today? So I did a video in the past about me cutting the cord and haven't had cable service since 2009. And one of those applications I talked about in that video was dark media. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how can you get dark media for yourself. Okay, so dark media is a service called IPTV. IPTV stands for Internet Protocol Television. That means you have to have internet access for it to work. So it's not your typical cable service or your dish network service where you need a dish or a cable box to watch TV. All you need with IPTV is just internet access. Now there's a bunch of different IPT services out there, but the one I'm going to focus on in this video is Dart Media. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to that link in the description. That's going to take you over to the website where you can sign up. Don't try to Google Dart Media. Follow the link in the description because it's going to take you directly to it. There's a bunch of other links on the Google search that's going to take you to some different places. But my link will actually take you directly to where you need to sign up. So once you click on that link, it's going to take you to this web page that says Get Dart Media. Now this background might change, but trust me, this is the place where you need to be. And you want to stroll down stroll down down here you're going to see all these different boxes that you need to choose from as far as signing up so you got the $19.99 for one month you got the $58.99 for six months you got the $59.99 for 12 months and then you got another 12 month plan for $69.99 and then you got another 12 month for $79.99 and another 12 month for $99.99 now you're saying to yourself, what's the difference between all these 12 month plan? Well, it depends on how much connections you need. Well, this one month plan for $19.99 gives you five connections. That means you can have five concurrent viewing at the same time. You can have five TV going at the same time. You can have three TVs and two tablets or your smartphone. It doesn't matter what the combination is as long as you know that you only have five connections that you can make. Now when you look at the one that says $58.99 for six months, it's only have two connections. That means you can hook up two TVs or maybe a tablet and a TV or your smartphone and a TV, whichever combination you choose. Now this first 12 month plan for $59.99 is only have one connection. That means you can only have one TV going at a time. This one down here, the next one that says $69.99 has two connections. That means you can have two TVs going at the same time and they can be watching different programs. The next one up is $79.99 for three connections. And then the other one, the last one on the list says $9.99 and that's five connections. And it doesn't have to be five TVs. It could be tablets and your smartphone. Now one note. I've tried it on the iPad and it doesn't work as good as it does on the Fire TV tablet or maybe another Android tablet because the Android app works perfectly. So it works perfect on the Android phones and it works perfect on the Android tablets. I can't guarantee you on the iOS because I've tried it on the iPad and it didn't work at all. Now if we stroll down a little bit further, there's a weekend plan. So if you just want to try it for the weekend, and see if it works for you. You know, you might want to do a trial thing. It might not be for you. And finally, you got a trial plan. So if you want to try it for 24 hours, see if it's for you, it might not be for you. Before you even go full blown, you might want to actually do the trial plan and see if it's your thing. Or even the weekend plan, because it's only $10.99. I'm not sure about the older fire sticks, so you might want to do a trial to see if it works on those. I can recommend the Fire Stick 4K because I'm using those right now and it works flawlessly. Now I know there are some users out there that has a TV that has the Android store built in. I haven't tried it on one of those TVs. My TV don't have that capability, but you can try downloading the Dart Media app with the trial version and see if it works on the TV and you probably won't need a Fire Stick. So my recommendation is before you try any one of these bigger plan up here, the monthly or the, I mean, the monthly is fine. If you want to do the monthly, I think that's okay if you want to try that, but don't try to go for the 12 month yet. I mean, do the weekend or the trial and see if it's for you. And if it's not, then at least you're not locked in for a whole 12 month. But if you're going to 12 month, make sure you go with the 
12 month 999 plan because at least you have five connections. Now, one disclaimer I want to make sure I've mentioned don't use any special characters in your password because that's going to prevent you from logging. I've tried that a couple of times in the password that I've created and I end up having an issue logging in because that special character was in there. And I didn't know what the problem was until I took the special character out. And that's when I realized do not use special character. Once you choose the plan, then it's going to take you over to the screen. Now it might say login. If you already have an account, you would log in. If you don't, then you'd have to go up here to register. So once you get over to the registration page, you got to put in your first name, your last name, email address, phone number, all that stuff. They're not going to call you. They just want to keep it for record keeping sake, I guess. Set up your security question, and then you can join the mailing list if you want to put in that stuff right there, click this, click register, and then it's going to take you over to your payment page. And then once you put in the payment and you go to all that process, just remember the username and password that you created so you can actually log in. So after you register, set up your username, your password, verify your account, all that good stuff. Then you want to come back to this page and just click login and then log in to make sure the account is actually active and ready to go. Now, once you log in and you can see your information, you'll see your name and your address and all that stuff. And you see you have one service active, then that means this part of the process is finished. So now you want to move over to the TV and get the app installed either on the Fire Stick or your Fire TV, whichever way you want to get it installed, because that's where you're going to put in the information like your username and password so you can start accessing those channel and the movies and all that stuff. Okay, so when you get to the Fire TV stick, there's no way to actually download the app from the Amazon App Store because they don't have it available. The only way you can get it from the Google Store. So the other way to get it is to actually install it through the downloader app. So once you get to the Fire Stick, what you want to go is go all the way over to Settings and move down all the way over to My Fire TV. And then you want to move down to Developer Option and then you want to make sure this is on. I just turned mine off to show you that it's going to say off. So what you want to do is click on. It's going to ask you, do you want to do this? And you say, yes, turn it on. Because that's the only way you can install the Dart Media app on the Fire TV Stick if that is on. If it's off, it's not going to allow you to do the install. So once you do that, what you want to do is click the home button on your Fire TV remote, which is going to take you back to the home screen. And then the next thing you want to do is look for an app called Downloader. And you should see it pop up on the list. If it doesn't, just keep typing and eventually it will pop up. So you want to click on that. Then you want to do an install. Now mine is already installed, so it's going to go straight into it. But once you install it, then it's going to finish out the install and then it's going to go straight here. Once you get here, now you have to put in the credential to download the app from Dart Media. So that's what you want to type in. You want to type in dartmedia.org slash APK. Then you want to say go. Or you can click the play button. So once you get here, you want to click on the one that says dartmedia.org.apk. And then when this pop up, what you want to do is move over to install and install it. Now I already done the install, so I'm not going to do it again because I already have it on my fire stick. But after you do this step, then the app is going to complete and then you can just hit delete and get rid of the installation because you don't need it anymore. You're not deleting the app when you do that. All you're doing is deleting the installation file so it doesn't take up all that room on your Fire Stick. Once you finish here with the installation and all that and you delete that installation file, you want to click the home button, which is going to take you back here. Now yours is not going to be on recent and it probably won't be on this list either. So you probably have to move all the way over to the right till you see see all. Once you go to see all, then it's probably going to be at the bottom. So if it's at the bottom, you want to click the three lines on your remote, which is going to bring up that menu and you want to bring it front. Just like that. And that's how it will be right in front. So then when you come back here, you'll see it on your apps list. It's going to be right there. It says dark media. So from this point, all you need to do is log in with your credentials and you're going to bring up the rest of the information like the guide and the movies and stuff like that. So let's go into it. 
So now that you're on the login screen, put in your username and your password and you should be able to log in straight in and then it's going to bring up all the stuff in your dart meter. And then it's going to say successfully log in. If the little spinny loaded thing freezes, it's not frozen. It's just loading in the actual guide and stuff like that. So don't worry about it. It's not frozen. Okay, so after you log in, it's going to take you to this screen right here. This screen is going to have your time and the date. Live TV is basically where you're going to go. So once you go into live TV, then you'll see all the stuff that's available to you. So you have to click down on the menu button and you'll see it just take you down the list. This screen is customizable. So you can take stuff off of the menu that you don't want to fool with, or you can add stuff that's not on the menu. So in order to customize the screen, you want to go up to the three dots in the right corner. And then you want to move down to show and hide categories. So here's where you do the add and take away. So if you don't want this stuff to show, you just uncheck it. So you have to go down on your little controller and then keep on deselecting and selecting. So if there's something there that you want, you leave it there. If you want to add it back in later, you can add it in. But it's not gone off the system. It stays there. So it's just a matter of adding and taking away. So if I'm going down this list, I say, okay, I want to keep the premium movies. I want to take all this other sports stuff because I'm not really a sport fanatic. You can keep music if you want to, turn it on and off, Sunday ticket. And a lot of this stuff is sports stuff, kids stuff. So, you know, you take whatever you want off the list and you add whatever you want on the list. So I'm just leave the main two that I like. So I'm going to leave the USA HD on because that's all your USA channel, like AMC and stuff like that. Once you uncheck everything, you hit back on your remote and then it's going to take you back to this menu. That's going to show you all the stuff that you selected. So from here, you can go into USA HD. So once you get here, you're going to see all the channels that's available to you. You got CBS, A&E, AMC. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. You can see FX. There's Deadpool if you want to watch it. Now, I'm not going to play anything on the screen because YouTube tend to flag your videos for copyright infringement. And I don't want to end up with no copyright infringement. But trust me, these channels work. You know, I'm just scanning through it right now so you can see all the stuff that's available to you. Sometimes this guide is kind of funky in a way. And what I mean by funky in a way is you might see, for instance, Bad Boys. But then when you click on it, sometimes it's Bad Boy 2 is playing. But it's either going to be one of those movies playing at the time. Sometimes the guide is a little bit off. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit the premium movies. So from this point on, I'm going to see all my premium channels like HBO, Sky Movie, uh, Showtime, Cinemax, Epix. I mean, you name it. All that's there for you to watch. So you can... Pick, choose, and refuse from whatever you see right here. Like if you want to watch The Princess Bride, you click on it, it starts playing. Now, sometimes the streams don't work, but it's not a big deal. You know, sometimes you have to come back to it. But there's so much to choose from that if you can't watch one stream, then you can always pick from another. So it's not really a big deal the way I see it. So all this stuff, like I say, is available to you. And you just follow the steps to get to dark media and you can watch whatever you want to every once in a while you'd have to come in here on that same three dots in the right corner and hit refresh and then what it's going to do is update the guide because sometimes the guide is outdated especially if you went a couple of days or even a day without watching it it tends to like be blank or there's nothing there so once you hit that refresh button it's going to update everything on that list so then you just go back into your live tv and you start watching the stuff on demand is stuff that shows up like what you want to watch. For instance, you got war movies. So if you click on war, it's going to show you a bunch of war movies in that category. If you say you want to watch Western, then it's going to show you whatever Western is available on demand. The on demand list is not big, but there's stuff there to watch. You say action. So you can see there's more movies in the action genre than anything else. So you can click on any one of these movies watch them, pause them, and come back to them later. And I don't want to play them, like I said, because I don't want to get strike on YouTube for copyright. But trust me, it works. So you can watch the previews 
or you can actually play the movies but it gives you all the synapses on the movie so that's the on-demand and the on-demand like I said works whatever category you choose from you know here's boxing and if you go back you got a whole bunch of different stuff to choose from all the way down to documentary so check it out it's dark media and like I say it has all the different stuff that you can choose from if you go to series you know it's the same way you can see what's added new and like you see there it is walking dead and stuff like that these are the recent stuff that's been added so that's dark media like I say you want to do the trial version if you want to you know or even the weekend version just to see if it's for you it works 98% of the time it's not 100% perfect but that 2% is not really a big deal. You have some channels that don't stream. It might say playback failed. But you can always go to another channel and play that. And then you go back to this one and it changed. Sometimes the refresh will actually help out. You know, because the fail might be because it just can't get no connection with the server. But sometimes when you do the refresh, that will fix the problem. Or like I said, just go to another channel and watch that instead. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, follow the link to sign up. Don't click on any other link. Don't go to Google and search for it. Just go ahead and follow that link. Sign up first and then follow the steps of how to install it. I'm also going to include a link to a video of the guy that actually showed me how to install it. So if you have any issue following my installation, I want to give him credit by giving you a link to his actual video I'll show you how to install it on the fire stick now if you're using anything other than the fire stick all you have to do is go to the play store and that goes for your Android boxes any other Android box that you have if you got an Android TV you probably can download it straight from this store too and that's the dark media app so when you're looking for the app all you gotta go is to the play store install the dark media app and then put in your credentials after you already go to the process of signing up and then you're good to go and all this stuff is live and current stuff it's not something that's pre-recorded or left over from another day no this is what's going on right now so enjoy the dark media I've been enjoying it for the last 30 days so that's why I'm here to report that it works and it works like a charm and they're always updating it the version I'm running now is actually 1.3.7 so if there's another update I'm pretty sure you'll know and depend on how many connections you have it's going to show you right here now you see mine says active connection one so I'm watching Hancock now on Sky Movies so that's why it says one connection so if I should turn on another TV or even my phone or something it's going to say two connections and once it reach five connections then I can't connect anymore so all I have to do is just turn off one and then turn on another for instance, I just turn off the TV in one room, turn on the TV in another room, and I still maintain that five connections. You just can't go past the max. So it's not logging the connection as a permanent thing. You know, it only says active connection. That's why it says active connection. So if you turn off your TV, that's not an active connection anymore. So that will be taken off the count. But if you have any questions, just go ahead and leave it in the comments and I will help you and guide you and show you what to do to solve that problem. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. I want to thank you for taking the time for watching it. Leave your comments, leave your questions, and I'll look forward to see you next time. Have a good one.